Well, a number of biological reactions involve the transfer of electrons uh, from one species to another. And there are three energy uh, changes that are associated with these reactions. And so before we look into the free energy changes uh, and uh, electron transfer, uh, we're first going to uh, revisit and review some of the principles of redox reactions. So on the board here, is a simple redox reaction uh, where on the reactant side we have iron metal so this uh, in parentheses is the phase of the iron so this is solid the s is for solid and this is transferring electrons to a copper two cation which is in aqueous solution so this is um, in other words this is in water okay so that's what the aq means in the parentheses here so electrons are being transferred from iron metal to copper two, and on the product side, what happens is that these electrons are lost uh, to, from the iron metal to form iron two, which is now in aqueous solution, and copper metal is formed as a product. Okay? So we can divide these into two what are known as half reactions. Right? So we can look at just the iron species, so we're just going to look at the, what's colored in red right now. So on the reactant side, we would have iron solid. To form iron two. Aqueous, okay? Now, what we want to do to figure out where the electrons go, whether the electrons um, are on the reactant or the product side, is we're going to look at the net charge on the reactant and product side. So on the left-hand side, when there's no uh, number as a superscript, right, what that indicates is that the oxidation state is zero. So that's just implied. We don't usually write zero in a superscript. It's just there's no superscript number there. Okay. So the net charge here. Uh, for the the net charge here is going to be zero. Okay, on the product side, we have an oxidation state of two plus charge of two plus in this case, uh, and so the net charge will be two plus. Okay, but the charges have to balance on both the reactant and the product side. Right, so if the reactant has a net charge of zero, then the product side must as well. So that means in order to balance the plus two charge on the product side, we need to add two negative charges. So equal zero, and we do that by adding uh, two electrons on the product side. So this is the half reaction uh, for conversion of iron metal to iron two, uh, and then electrons end up being a product, okay? So we can do a similar thing for copper. So we have copper to aqueous on the reactant side, copper metal on the product side, the net charge is plus two on the reactant side zero on this side, on the product side, excuse me. So that means we need to balance the reaction with two electrons on the reactant side, okay? So these are our two half reactions. And so just notice that uh, if you added these two half reactions back together, right, there's two electrons on the reactant side uh, for the copper reaction, two electrons on the product side for the iron reaction, these would cancel out, and then we would arrive back at our balanced equation in this case, okay? Uh, we'll go over how to uh, balance more complicated redox reactions in a later video, uh, but for the purpose of this, that works out just fine for us, okay? So we have our two half reactions, and from here now, what we can do is we can identify the reductant and the oxidant, okay? So the reductant, is going to donate electrons. So in other words, wherever you see electrons on the product, right, side of the half reaction, so in this case, 
there's electrons on the product side of the half reaction for conversion of iron metal to iron 2. There are no electrons on the product side for the conversion of copper 2 to copper metal. All right. So what that means is this is a reductant. Right? And so recall then that reductant right, is being oxidized. Okay, so we have a reductant here. Actually, I'll just go get that out of here. Okay, so reductant is also what you might have heard. Uh, that's what I meant to put it here. So reductant is also what you might more commonly have heard of as the reducing agent. Okay, So the oxidant, on the other hand, will take the electrons. So that means it's the species uh, that has the half reaction where the electrons are on the reactant side. So on, in the top reaction, there are no electrons on the reactant side. In the copper reaction, the electrons are on the reactant side. So this is the oxidant. And again, you may have also heard, a term you may have heard applied for oxidant is the oxidizing agent. Those are equivalent. Okay. And so that helps us first identify, uh, so when we're looking at redox reactions, uh, we want to be able to identify what's the reductant, what's donating the electrons in the reaction, and then what's the oxidant, what's receiving the electrons that are being donated. 